Street, uh, Ron Westry. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Dr. Pat. And glad, glad to be here, man. <laughs> how's the how is the weather first here in Columbia, South Carolina? Oh wow, you know, it's fair season. It's the the fair is here. Mm -hmm. Um and so when the fair comes to town, we all know that's when the weather breaks. So we are just experiencing, you know, the fall break. So it's kind of cool out right now, and this is like the first day that I've seen like this since the summer where it's actually cool during the day. This is literally the first day I've seen like that. So we are pretty much there. It's getting it's getting cold. It's crisp right now. Very good. So let me let me shift this conversation with respect to Canada now. You, I, I, you're in Canada. You're teaching at the University of York in Canada. Uh, just share with us a little bit about what what exactly are you doing there uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, teaching your student. Just, just talk talk talks a little bit about sure, that. Sure, sure. Uh, well, I, I am the uh, inaugural Oscar Peterson chair at York University. And so, you know, Oscar Peterson is the most famous, the most well-known musician in Canada is Oscar Peterson. So York University created an endowed chair for him in 2009. So I am the inaugural Oscar Peterson chair since 2009. And so in being the chair of, of that endowment, I have to administrate the scholarships. I have to do outreach. And I also have to be a full-time prof. I have to teach full-time and I have to have enough hours uh, to validate me as a full-time professor. So I've got the, the chair, the administration, the uh, administration of the scholarships, the full-time teaching, which involves uh, jazz theory, uh, history courses. I'm actually uh, one of the pioneers of uh, teaching hip-hop as a history. So I have a huge hip hop course that I'm kind of famous for there. Uh, um, and I built that course and that's like 400 students a week. And I've been teaching 400 students a week in the hip hop course since 2009. Since 2009, you've been teaching the, uh, the course, the hip hop course. Can you just spell out a little bit about what exactly is included in, the, uh, in your course curriculum with respect to what you've just alluded to us or described to us? Indeed. Uh, first of all, you know, I'm known as a composer. I'm a, I'm a musician and I'm a composer. But when I arrived at York University, they had a course called Contemporary Black Urban Music. And I'm like an African-American guy who from the States. I'm a new prof. And they're like, hey, we got this course like Contemporary Black Urban Music. You think you could teach this course? But I didn't really go there to teach this type of thing. And so it ended up becoming my baby, you know. And uh, the way I built this curriculum, I built the curriculum from scratch. And so what I'm doing, I'm teaching his hip hop as a canon, just like you would teach classical music, just like we teach jazz. There is a specific canon, there's a specific legacy, there's a continuity, there's an evolution that is just as valid as jazz history and classical history. So I teach the course uh, just like a history course, hip hop history, and it is a valid history. It has the same characteristics of uh, the crossover from artist to artist, the evolution, just like you would find in classical music from Mozart to Beethoven, uh, just like you find in jazz from Charlie Parker to John Coltrane. The hip hop has the same evolution uh, historically as those art forms, and that's the way I approach that class. Okay, let's shift our conversations uh, now uh, based upon on your new release, the, the, uh, the book uh, Life in Reverse. Can you share with our listeners uh, what is exactly is Intel in that uh, textbook or oh, that book you just released uh, a couple months ago? This is my first uh, trade book. Um, I've been working on textbooks a long time, but the publishing company decided to release the trade book first. Um, and that book is Life in Reverse, Tales of a Very Stable Narcissist. Uh, the title uh, is a metaphor for the structure of the book. The book is written in reverse. And uh, I do believe it might be one of the first um memoirs that is actually written in reverse and by writing it in reverse it actually allowed me to start in the present so it might also be one of the first book that actually starts in present time and so uh the title alludes to the structure of the book okay uh can we talk about a little bit about the chapter one of your book what is exactly it's entail with respect to those individuals who are uh, admire uh themselves um, just a kind of a synopsis of chapter one? Yes, sir. Uh, well, the book proceeds backwards. So the first chapter is, is the last chapter. So it starts chapter 51. 
uh, and then it proceeds backwards down to chapter what, 20. What? T tell me a little bit about, you do have a 51 chapters in this it's book? 51 chapters in the book, and because Actually. the book goes backwards, it actually starts at chapter 51 and proceeds backwards to the lower chapters. Let's Let's talk about the chapter 51 then. I think you have put it a lot of hours in time in your yeah. book. Uh, Professor Ron Westry, uh, just tell us a little bit about that uh, chapter 51. 51 um, is actually called 5150. So I, I squeezed, I crunched both chapters together because they were short. So it's, the chapter is called 5150. And uh, 5150 is actually a law in California called the 5150 law where you can actually check a, men, a person into the mental hospital if you feel that they are in, unstable. You can actually check another person in to the uh, hospital. So it's actually a pun. The first chapter, 5150, has to say this guy's nuts to write a book like that. So chapter 5150, and that actually is a series of essays and existential um, essays and ideas that I introduce in the first chapter, just to basically let people uh, know where my intellectual breath is. And uh, so those chapters basically kind of come in by way of existential essays about current topics. So with respect to that chapter 5150, uh, how are you related uh, that chapter with what exactly is going on currently here in America in and around the world? I deal a lot with the pandemic in those chapters, the opening chapters. Uh, I talk a lot about uh, this uh, conflict between um, uh, vaccinations and masking and uh, this people's uh, idea of liberty, you know, versus uh, information. And uh, I deal, I go deeply into these topics that we we're talking about at this time. So I think, again, it's a book where you op you start reading the book and you realize that I'm talking in present time. And I think that's a unique feature for this book. With the uh, just the lay person out there in the street, uh, let's say in Columbia, South Carolina, because you're originally from Columbia here, South Carolina, in Greenview. If I'm not, if I'm mistaken, That's just right. correct me. Okay, so Where what kind? Of, yes, what kind of message are you sending uh, to your neighbors here in Columbia, South Carolina, during at this time? The message, if I had to address my neighbors here in my my community where I grew up in, the Good Hood, Greenview, Farrow Hills, South Carolina, right here in the bottom. Uh, and this area where I grew up in is supposed to be kind of the bad area, but you know, it's all I know, so I, we don't think of it that way. But if I had to talk to my homies out here, I would just be saying, I would be communicating the idea that a, a person that is just like them has gone out into the world and communicated for them. Let's take this message maybe in Canada, where you were professionally teaching at the uh, York University. What kind of message this book uh, is sending, chapter 5051, it's sending to your students uh, at the York University? For the students specifically, uh, if I were speaking to them about the book, I would. it would be an, a, an idea of encouraging them to um, log their own life in the way that I have and to be as meticulous and and journal their experiences in time on time and I would be in, hopefully it would be an encouragement to them that they would also be able to produce a book like this uh, at some point in their in their um, you know career uh, when I was their age I could not have imagined producing a book like this but I would hope that a book like this would encourage my students to know that hey I'm going to do that one day. I'm going to write my story one day, and I will hope my book will serve as that type of uh, inspiration. Tell us a little bit, uh, where were you educated here in Columbia, South Carolina, from the kindergarten, middle school, high school, and, and college? Of course. Uh, again, I grew up here in Greenview, Power Hills. So when you grow up in this community, the, the, the progression is you start out at B.B. Reed Kindergarten. Your parents drop you off. They go to work. And everybody I came through school with, we all started at kindergarten together, B.B. Reed. Uh, which is connected to the Reed Chapel AME Church. Mm -hmm. And so after that, you go to Greenview Elementary School, okay? And after Greenview Elementary, you go to Fairwall Middle. And then after Fairwall, you head to Keenan High. And that's my path. And then after Keenan, uh, I headed down to South Carolina State um, on a marching band scholarship. Very good. This is uh, Professor Ron Westry. Uh, thank you again for uh, speaking with us. And uh, we're looking forward to... Uh, get one of your copy. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Professor Ron Westray talks about Life in Reverse, a trade book that has been published a year ago. So we encourage all of you to pick up your copy and read Life in Reverse by 
Professor Ron Westry.